The series opens with Luke working in a barber shop for a man named Pop. There was a guy named Shamik in the barber shop who was clearly someone who liked to get into trouble, as he was about to start a problem with Luke for a very trivial reason. Moments later, a woman named Patricia, who works as a lawyer, arrives. She has come to pick up her son Lonnie, who has finished shaving. Patricia takes advantage of the opportunity and talks to Luke. She asked him to go together one day to drink coffee because she liked him and she was also separated from her husband. But Luke doesn't give her a clear answer so she leaves the barber shop. After that, Pop and Luke talk and we discover from their conversation that Pop knows that Luke has supernatural powers, and he also knows that Luke's wife, Reva, has died. He told him that he had to get over his wife's death in order to live his life. So he suggested that he go on a date with Patricia, and Luke told him that he would think about it. Pop also asked him to use his supernatural powers to defend innocent people and fight crime, but Luke refuses. He did not want to have this supernatural power because there were those who experimented on him which led to him obtaining this supernatural power. In the events of the series, we will discover who conducted the experiments on Luke. After that, Luke goes to his other job. On his way, he meets a woman named Connie Lynn, who rents to Luke the apartment in which he currently lives. She asked him to give her the rent payment and he did. After that we see him at his other job, he was working at Harlem's Paradise nightclub owned by a person named Stokes. Luke's job was to wash dishes and clean the kitchen. Mr. Nick comes to Luke and tells him that there is a waiter named Dante who did not come to work today and he wants him to replace him. Then he went to serve drinks. A girl named Misty Knight came to him and wanted a drink. He liked her, but he noticed that this girl was looking at Stokes. But he didn't care about that because he liked her. On the other hand, Stokes was sitting with his relative, Mrs. Mariah, who is a famous politician and has an important position in the city. Through her conversation with Stokes, we discover that his business is illegal, and this is what upsets her. But she was forced to cooperate with him because he was giving her a lot of money for her election campaign. He told her that he would undertake a big mission and would give her a lot of money, and in return she would have to agree to establish his own nightclub, so that he could donate through this nightclub to various associations. But the truth of the matter is that he wanted to benefit from this in order to cover his suspicious actions and money laundering. Then a person named Domingo, a crime dealer in New York, arrives and wants to buy weapons from Stokes. At the same time we see Domingo's men taking weapons from Stokes' men. But during that time, a gang of three people arrive and kill everyone in order to steal the money. After that, these people remove their masks and we discover that they are Shamik and Dante, who works in the nightclub, and Chico, who works in the barber shop. Suddenly, Shamik kills Dante because he works in a nightclub and he is afraid that he will betray them. Then they take the money and run away. But Dante was still alive and quickly called Stokes' bodyguard named Tone and told him everything that happened, and then he died. Luke was still talking to this girl and he asked her to visit him at home so they could have dinner. At night, Luke dreams that there are two people in a prison beating another person. Then he wakes up. We then discover that Misty, who Luke met, works as a detective and she did not tell Luke that. She is now at the scene of the crime that happened last night. Meanwhile, Stokes was in his office and a person named Shades came to him, who was one of the people Luke had been dreaming about. Shades works with Diamondback and it is assumed that Diamondback is the one who supplies Stokes with weapons so that he can sell them. Shades asks Stokes to look at him. We discover that Shades has a supernatural power, which is reading minds. He knew that Stokes had no involvement in what happened last night and that Dante was the one who betrayed them. So he decided to help Stokes, he decided to look for Shamik and Chico to get the money back. But before that, they went to meet Mariah who was at a children's charity conference. Stokes tells her that he will let some men protect her because he is afraid that Domingo's men will kill her. He also told her that he would soon give her more money. But the men Stokes left with Mariah had a different goal, which we will discover in the events of the series. After that they were able to find out where Shamik is, Tone takes him to a nightclub. Luke saw them and was upset because he couldn't help it. After that comes Shades, which when Luke saw, he remembered the past. We find out that he was in prison with Luke. Luke left the scene so Shades wouldn't see him. On the other hand, we see Stokes beating Shamik until he kills him after which he asks Tone to throw away the body and search for Chico so that they can recover the rest of the money. After that, we see the police finding the body in the street. Detective Misty was also present at the crime scene. Luke was in the apartment and was packing his things to escape the city so that Shades would not find him, but the spirit of his dead wife appeared to him and told him that now he was not weak and that he should not run away. Indeed, he decided to stay in the city and went to give the rest of the apartment rent money to Connie and her husband, Jin. He finds the men Stokes had already appointed to stay with Mariah. They wanted to take money from the man and his wife as support for Mariah's campaign. Luke did not like it and asked them to leave, but they refused and quarreled with him. But, thanks to his supernatural strength, he was able to eliminate them. Then he told Connie that he would protect her and everyone in the city from criminals and then left the place. The next day, he was at work in the barber shop, and he told him about what happened at Connie's restaurant. Pop felt happy because he finally felt that Luke was starting to use his supernatural powers to do good. 
Meanwhile, Stokes and Tone and Shades arrive. The purpose of the visit is to catch Chico because they know that he works in the barber shop. Shades sees Luke and recognizes him, but does nothing for him. Stokes and his men then leave the scene. After that, Pop asks Luke to find Chico to protect him. Indeed, he went looking for Chico until he was able to find him. When he reached him, he told him that his friend Shamik had been killed and that he was being searched for, so he also asked him to come with him to protect him. But Chico refused. Luke then went to Pop and told him that Chico refused to come with him. Then he asked him what his relationship with Chico was and why he wanted to help him. Pop tells him that he was a gang leader, and Chico's father was with him in the gang, and Stokes was also with them. Stokes and Chico's father worked under Pop, which is why Stokes still has respect for Pop even though Pop left the world of crime many years ago. Then Pop enters the barber shop to find Chico waiting for him. He was angry with him because of what he did, but he told him that he would help him. But while they were talking, there was a customer named Turk who overheard their conversation. Luke took this customer out of the place so that he would not notice what was happening. After that, Detective Misty arrives at the barber shop with her work partner, Detective Raphael. They started questioning Pop and asking him if he knew where Chico was. Luke was eavesdropping and was upset because Misty didn't tell him her real identity, so he came to her and she felt embarrassed. Luke tells them that they don't know where Chico is now. After that, Luke goes to the nightclub and meets Stokes. He tells him that Pop was able to find Chico and he is now in a safe place, and also that Pop wants to return the money that Chico stole in exchange for Chico staying alive. Stokes told him he'd think about it. Meanwhile, Turk met up with Tone and Shades and told them that Chico was at the barber shop. So the two go to the barber shop, Tone starts shooting violently at the barber shop, as a result Pop and Chico die. As for Luke, he protected baby Lonnie with his body, then he pretended that he was dead. Shades and Tone take the money and run away. After that, Detective Misty comes to the scene and she is surprised that Luke is still alive despite the amount of bullets that were fired. After that, we see Shades and Tone telling Stokes what happened and giving him the money. But even though Stokes was angry because Tone had acted without his permission, he was also angry when he learned that Pop had died because he respected him. What made matters worse was that Turk came and asked Tone to give him money, and this greatly angered Stokes, so suddenly he grabbed Tone and threw him from the roof. Turk feels afraid and leaves. After that, Stokes gives the money to Mariah, so she now has enough money to start her election campaign and help Stokes. After that, Luke was feeling frustrated and sad because of the death of his only friend Pop, so he decided to take revenge. The first thing he does is go to Mariah's headquarters and start watching. While he was there, a young man came from behind him and was carrying a gun and pointed it at Luke in order to rob him. But Luke felt angry and took the gun from the young man and shot himself, but he was not affected by that. The young man left in shock at what he saw. Then we see Stokes as he was watching the news, where the news says that Chico did not die, but was injured and taken to the hospital while he is still alive, so Stokes decided to deal with the matter. Meanwhile, Luke goes to the barber shop and is sad about the passing of his friend Pop. Then he goes to the funeral home and meets John, the funeral home manager. While they are talking about funeral arrangements, Stokes arrives and tells Luke that he will be the one to take care of the funeral arrangements with John. Indeed, Stokes and John are arranging the details of the funeral, and he also tells John that he wants to dispose of Tone's body without anyone knowing. This is what John agreed to. On the other hand, Luke goes to the barber shop and is greeted by Bobby, the accountant and an old friend of Pop. Bobby tells Luke that the barber shop will be closed because Pop had a lot of tax debt and after his death, the bank will seize the barber shop. But Luke told him that the barber shop would remain Pop's property no matter what happened, and that he would be the one who would pay the remaining debts owed by Pop. Elsewhere, we see a group of Domingo's men attacking Stokes' men, killing them and stealing the weapons they are transporting. Misty and Raphael arrive at the scene and they conclude that Domingo and his men are seeking revenge. After that they went to meet Chico at the hospital. They tried to get any information that would help them in the case, but Chico did not speak. Raphael gave him his phone number in case he changed his mind and wanted to talk. Then Luke arrives at the hospital and starts talking to Chico. He tells him that he will take revenge on Stokes because he killed Pop. His plan was to make Stokes lose his money so he asked Chico where Stokes was hiding his money. Chico told him that he hides money in many places, but if he feels in danger, he moves his money to only one place, and that place is Mariah's office. Luke then begins attacking Stokes' men at their headquarters. Then we see Stokes sitting with Mariah to tell her that he will transfer his money to her office because there is a great danger at the present time. Mariah agreed to this and this is what Luke wanted in order to get the most money from Stokes. Stokes was in his nightclub and suddenly Domingo came to him and asked him to give him his money or weapons. But Stokes refused and told him that he was sure that his men were attacking his gang headquarters and that he would not give him any money because of what he was doing. Domingo got angry about that and left the place. This means that the war between these two people has begun. On the other hand, Luke begins to monitor Mariah's office and he witnesses them transferring money there. So he starts attacking them and getting rid of Stokes' men, 
Then he takes the money and leaves. Then we see Misty and Raphael working to solve the case. We discover from their conversation that Luke stole part of the money and left the rest of the money for the police to seize. They also conclude that this person wants revenge on Stokes. Misty believed that this person was Luke because he had supernatural powers, but she did not have any evidence of that. Raphael then went to meet Chico, who wanted to confess everything in order to avenge Pop. So he told Raphael everything about the theft he and his friends had committed, and he also told him that Luke was the one attacking the Stokes gang headquarters. But when Raphael finds out about this, he kills Chico, then he goes to Stokes nightclub and we discover that he works for Stokes. He told him that he killed Chico and also told him that the one attacking his headquarters is Luke. On the other hand, Luke gives the money he took to Bobby to pay Pop's taxes. Then he goes to Connie's restaurant to have dinner. Suddenly we see Stokes on top of one of the buildings near the restaurant as he launches a missile into the restaurant and blows up the place. Then the police arrive at the scene and Luke and Connie are under the rubble. While Luke is dreaming of the past, we discover that he was living in another state and was in prison. On his first day in prison, the strict warden, Rackham, came to him and told him and the rest of the prisoners about the prison rules. Rackham hits Luke after he speaks up and tells him that even if he is a former officer, that does not mean he has the right to speak. With this we also discover that Luke was a former officer. After entering prison, he began to engage in psychological sessions administered by Riva, who later became his wife. One day, Luke was in the prison yard, and Rackham was standing with two prisoners, one of whom was Shades. He asked them to attack Luke. Indeed, at night, they attacked him, but he managed to defeat them and defend himself, even though at that time he did not have supernatural strength. When Rackham saw this, he was impressed and went to him and asked him to work with him, but Luke refused. After that, Luke began to integrate more into the prison and met a prisoner named Squabbles, and they became close friends. One day, Rackham came to Luke and took him to a place where his friend Squabbles was, and one of the men killed the person sitting next to him. So Rackham tells Luke that he will accuse his friend of killing this man or that he must work for him in order to save his friend. So he finally decided to work for Rackham in order to save his friend. His tasks were very easy. We discover that Rackham used to make the prisoners engage in informal fights inside the prison ring and he and his friends would place bets on the matches. Luke became the fighter that always made Rackham money. After a while, Luke was not satisfied with what he was doing, so he went to Riva and asked her to help him reach a lawyer and tell him what was happening inside the prison. Indeed, she decided to help him. The wrong thing that Luke did was that he went to tell Squabbles, because the next day, Shades and another prisoner came to his cell and attacked Luke, causing him to suffer a very serious injury. As a result, he was hospitalized. The doctor responsible for him was Dr. Albert. Riva came to him at the hospital and told him that Rackham and the officers with him beat Squabbles until they made him tell them Luke's plan and then killed him. That's why Shades came with a prisoner to kill Luke. Luke was sad about his friend's death. Riva spoke with Dr. Albert and asked him to treat Luke. Indeed, he decided to treat him, but in a different way. He inserted Luke into a machine he created to make people have superpowers. When he did this, Rackham came and tried to destroy this machine so that Luke would die. But there was just a huge explosion in the machine and Luke did not die. Then Luke came out of the machine and had superpowers that helped him escape from prison. Then he contacted Riva, who liked him, so they decided to get married. Then they moved to live in another city. Because he was afraid of being recognized, he did not use his supernatural powers. Returning to the present time, we see Luke and Connie still alive under the rubble. Luke used his strength and was able to get out of the rubble with Connie. Everyone was in shock at what they saw. Misty tried to talk to him but he didn't pay any attention to her. The media was also filming it, so the whole city now knows that Luke is a superman. The next day he was removing the rubble and everyone was filming him with their phones. Stokes was in his office with his men, who told him that they had lost almost all of their money because of what Luke had done. So he got angry and asked his men to rob stores in the city and tell everyone that this was because of Luke. One of his men objected and told him that luck might kill them because of what they were doing. This angered Stokes, who took out his gun and killed him. Then we see his men robbing the city's stores. One of the stores they were robbing was for a girl named Aisha and they stole her grandfather's ring. So she got angry and went to Luke and told him that Stokes' men were robbing stores because of him. He promised her that he would return what was stolen from her. While he was leaving, he saw many people who came to him to tell him about the thefts they had been subjected to because of him. So he deals with the matter and begins attacking Stokes' men and recovering the money they stole. One day he saw one of Stokes' men being shot, when he asked him what happened to him. He tells him that Aisha was the one who shot him because they stole her grandfather's ring. Luke is upset by this and decides to return this ring to her as soon as possible. Then Raphael and Misty come and ask Luke to leave town because his presence causes a lot of problems, but he refuses. Then he went to Stokes's nightclub and easily beat up his men. Then he spoke to Stokes and told him that next time he would come to get rid of him. If he does not want to, then he must stop stealing from people or leave the city. 
Luke told Stokes that Shades knew him well and asked him to ask him about him. Indeed, Shades tells Stokes everything about Luke and he tells him that this person is very dangerous and that he should leave it to Diamondback to eliminate him. But Stokes refused and asked Shades if there was a specific weapon that could eliminate Luck. He told him that there was already a weapon that could do that. He showed him a video of a person dying because the bullet explodes from within. He told him that this is the only weapon that can kill Luck, but it is expensive. Stokes decided to bring a weapon and sell it to Domingo in order to get enough money to buy this weapon. On the other hand, we see two investigators talking to Misty and telling her that they suspect that Detective Raphael is working for Stokes. They asked her to watch him. Then Raphael arrives and Misty acts normal so as not to make him suspicious. After that, a phone call comes to Raphael, so he leaves and goes and meets his friend, the officer who is also a corrupt officer and works for Stokes. He told Raphael that they wanted to steal Stokes' weapons from the police. Raphael didn't like this idea but he was forced to agree. After a while, we see Raphael loading these weapons with him, not knowing what to do with this shipment. Next in the church was Pop's funeral service. Stokes gave a speech in which he mourned his friend Pop. But this did not please Luke, who also gave a speech and accused some criminals in the city. Everyone at the funeral knew that Luke was referring to Stokes. After that, Luke went to Aisha and gave her the ring after he was able to get it back. Then he went and met Stokes and urged him again not to harm anyone in the city. After that, Misty came to Luke and asked him if he was leaving town or not, but he was determined to stay. On the other hand, we see a woman named Claire, who is a nurse. As soon as she arrived in the city, she was robbed, but she pursued the thief and was able to recover her bag and beat the thief. After that, she went to her mother's restaurant and talked to her mother and told her that she was working in the hospital, but she was fired from work, and that is why she came back. She also told her mother that she had met superheroes and treated them, so she decided to become an assistant to any superhero in achieving justice. Then suddenly they see the news on TV talking about Luke, whom she had previously treated. So she decided to go and meet him. The next day, Stokes goes to take the weapons from Raphael. Raphael asked for more money, and this angered Stokes, so he threatened to kill him. Raphael got worried and took out a gun but Stokes managed to hit him with several bullets. He was about to kill him but there were people in the place so he left quickly. Luke was jogging and listening to a program by a woman named Trish. In the program, she asks if Luke is a superhero or not. After that, Luke goes with Bobby to have breakfast at Claire's mother's restaurant, then Claire comes and sees him and comes to talk to him. Luke was happy to see her again, and then they went to the barber shop. But Luke found that the door to the barber shop had been opened, and this surprised him. He entered and found Raphael there, injured. He fled to the barber shop so as not to be followed. Then Claire treats him. Meanwhile, Luke talks to Raphael and asks him to tell him about his relationship with Stokes. He tells him that he works for Stokes and that most of the cops in the city work for him. He also told him that he was the one who killed Chico on Stokes' orders. Luke gets angry and decides to let Raphael die, so he takes Claire and is about to leave, but Raphael tells him that he has a lot of evidence that convicts Stokes, and that this evidence is with Raphael. He has a notebook that contains all the evidence and all the names of the officers involved with Stokes. So Luke decided not to let Raphael die and asked Claire to treat him. Luke decided to go to Raphael's apartment to get the notebook. On the other hand, we see Captain Betty with the city officers. She tells them that Raphael has disappeared and that the reason may be because he knew that they had uncovered his matter. So she ordered everyone to search for Raphael. After that she decided to assign Officer Perez to work with Misty on the case. We also discover that Perez also works for Stokes. Misty and Perez then go to stake out Raphael's apartment. Then Luke goes to the apartment and finds the notebook. Misty felt that someone entered the apartment, so she and Perez go to the apartment. But Luke was able to leave the apartment through the window and jump, and Misty was able to recognize him. After that, Luke returns to the barber shop and he decides to take Raphael to the police station and also give the notebook to the police so that the police can take over. Indeed, he took them in his car, and Raphael was still suffering from his injury. Meanwhile, Stokes was with one of his men and asked him to tell all the criminals that there was a big reward for whoever kills Raphael. Then we see a group of criminals chasing Luke, but he was able to escape and enter one of the buildings. The criminals enter the building behind them and shoot at them, but Luke protects them and blocks the gunshots with his body. Then he goes and gets rid of them. After that, Raphael and Claire were about to leave the building, but a car came rushing towards them. Fortunately Luke arrived and stood in front of the car and stopped them. Misty was with Perez, she felt that Perez was trying to mislead her so that she wouldn't reach Raphael. So Misty pretends to call Betty and pretends that Betty tells her that Perez is a corrupt officer, so he gets angry and tries to attack Misty. But she was able to catch him. Then she found Raphael and Claire. Raphael was about to die and he bid farewell to Misty because she was his partner, and then he died. After that, Misty goes to arrest Stokes and all the corrupt people. Then we see that Mariah was in a television interview, 
and the announcer was embarrassing her with the questions she asked because her family are mostly criminals. Mariah got angry because of this and kicked the presenter out of her house. After that, we see Betty talking with Misty. She tells her that they may not prepare a case against Stokes because most of the city's officers are involved with him, and this would be a huge scandal for the police. After a few days, we see Luke going to Stokes' men who sell weapons, and he takes weapons from them. One of them gets angry and tells Luke that Stokes will be released from prison today. Luke was shocked and went to the police station to find out that Stokes had already been released and acquitted of all charges. On the other hand, Inspector Priscilla is now Misty's boss. She tells her that she suspects Luke of doing illegal things and asks her to investigate the matter. Even though Misty knew Luke was innocent, she was forced to carry out his orders. As she begins her mission, one of the NYPD technicians tells her that Luke's identity is fake. On the other hand, when Stokes came out of prison, Shades came to him and asked him to leave Luke and focus on his work, but Stokes refused, which angered Shades, who left the place. After that, Shades goes to Mariah. He was trying to convince her to get rid of Stokes and be the one to take control. On the other hand, Bobby, Luke, and Mariah were in the barber shop thinking about their next step, but Luke received a phone call from Stokes, who asked him to meet in order to resolve the differences between them. We then see Stokes playing the piano, while remembering the past. We discover that he loved playing the piano since he was young and was trying to learn how to play, but the problem was that he and Mariah lived with their relative called Mama Mabel. She was a criminal and wanted Stokes to work with her, but her husband, Uncle Pete, always encouraged Stokes to keep playing the piano. One day, she asked Stokes about Uncle Pete's whereabouts. He told her that he was sitting with someone from another gang. Mama Mabel discovered that her husband was cheating on her and working with another gang, so she waited for him to come home and forced Stokes to kill him. Mariah also encouraged him to kill him because she was saying that Uncle Pete was harassing her, although this claim was not true. This was Stokes' first time killing someone. He killed the only person who encouraged him to play the piano. Then we return to the present time. Luke arrives at the office. Stokes told him that he knew about his past and knew that he was an officer and had been imprisoned and he knew that he was escaping from prison. He told him that with this information he had he would put him in prison or that he had to work for him. Luke felt nervous and left without giving him any answer. After that, he decided to flee the city, but Claire convinced him to stay and fight instead of fleeing. She told him that if he escaped now, he would remain on the run for the rest of his life, and she encouraged him to stay and achieve justice in the city. He decided to go to the Domingo gang's headquarters, which was a gym. He beats up Domingo's man and later threatens Domingo to get the weapons he got from Stokes. After Luke takes the weapons from Domingo's gang, he heads to Misty to deliver the weapons to her. Misty demands that he reveal everything he knows, but he tells her that he's targeting Stokes and needs her to be ready to act when he starts. At the same time, Stokes tells Mariah that she should resign from the city council, which results in her becoming extremely angry. A confrontation occurred between Mariah and Stokes, where he accused her of colluding with Uncle Pete, who was harassing her. In a fit of rage, Mariah hit Stokes with a bottle and then pushed him from the upstairs window downstairs. Later, she came down and beat him to death with a microphone pole. After Stokes was killed, Shades came in and expressed his admiration that Mariah had taken the step, and suggested that she hold Luke responsible for killing Stokes. Meanwhile, Luke and Claire were walking in the park. But suddenly Diamondback appears for the first time and fires a Judas bullet at Luke, piercing his bulletproof skin and knocking him to the ground. After that, the ambulance comes to treat him. Claire was surprised because Luke's body was supposed to be bulletproof. Then we see Diamondback chasing the ambulance and he manages to hit the ambulance with a launcher. Luke and Claire hide behind the car, Diamondback arrives and asks him to be brave and come to confront him, but Luke ignores that, and this man leaves the place before the police arrive. Then Claire takes Luke to treat him. She discovered that when the bullet entered his body, it disappeared and turned into fragments to harm Luke's body. Although Luke's body was strong, he was in severe pain. Elsewhere, Misty goes to the casino to investigate Stokes' murder. Then she asked Mariah, but Mariah continued to lie and told Misty that she came and found Stokes dead. She also told her that a girl named Candace who worked at the casino had seen Stokes get killed. Misty investigates Candace, and she tells her that the killer is Luke. She did it because Shades and Mariah told her to, but Misty was convinced that what Candace was saying was a lie. After that, Misty goes to Mariah to interrogate her, but Mariah refuses. Priscilla also helps Mariah because she is her friend. Priscilla asked Misty to look for Luke. Misty then called Luke, and Claire answered. One of the police technicians was able to locate Luke, who was in the hospital. Misty goes to the hospital and discovers that Luke is injured, but despite that, she decides to take him to the police station to question him. But before that, Diamondback arrives and shoots the place. Luke started fighting him. Then Diamondback was able to take Misty hostage and he told Luke that he would kill her if he came near him. Then he takes Misty out and beats her. Luke and Claire then come to Misty, who was unconscious. Luke pursues Diamondback and reaches him. They start talking, 
and we discover that this person's real name is Willis. Also from their conversation we discover that their relationship was like brothers, but Willis sees that Luke abandoned him and left him in prison. So he created this bullet to kill Luke one day. Then they engage in a fierce fight, after which Luke leaves the place feeling tired due to his injury. But Willis was behind him and he told him that he would shoot him with a fatal shot again. Luke told him that he loved him and considered him like his brother. But Willis tells him that they are actually his brother and then shoots him. Then we see shades in the casino, and he tells everyone that he is the one who will run the casino from now on. We then see Mariah in the car talking to Candace and warning her not to change her statement regarding Stokes' murder. Then we see Misty interrogating Claire. Claire tells her that there is no need to interrogate her and Luke because they were far from the crime site and that she must search for the real killer. This angered Misty, but Priscilla came and asked Claire to leave. Then we see a psychiatrist talking to Misty because she is starting to lose her temper due to the pressure. Through her conversation with the doctor, we discover that Misty's mother was murdered and that is why she became a detective. Then Priscilla comes to her and tells her that she will not fire her from work and that she must now look for Luke. We then see Luke getting out of the garbage truck and suffering from his injury. We then see two policemen trying to catch him, but he was able to get rid of them easily. Police cameras were filming this, which now turns Luke into a criminal in everyone's eyes. Then he goes to meet Claire at the restaurant. He asked her to go to Dr. Albert because he was the only person who could treat him. Indeed, they go to Dr. Albert's clinic and ask him to treat him. Indeed, he takes them to the basement of his house. He and Claire begin to treat him, but they fail. Then Albert suggested that they put Luke inside a device containing very hot acid in order to weaken the strength of Luke's skin and thus they would be able to penetrate his body and remove the bullet fragments. Already being lowered into the machine and Luke was suffering greatly. Suddenly, Luke's heart stops and he dies, to everyone's shock. We then see Diamondback who is in a meeting with Shades and Stokes' men. Diamondback told them that they were now working for him. One of them wanted to object, but he shot him. Then he spoke with Shades and he told him that he loved and respected Luke and did not want him to die, and since Shades was the cause of this, he must die as well. Shades tells him that Mariah will help them and that he should give him a chance. Indeed Diamondback agrees. Shades then went to Mariah and asked her to gather the gangs in the city and control them in order to prove their strength to Diamondback. Indeed, she went to Domingo and asked him to gather all the gang leaders so that she could meet with them. Already at night, Mariah met with the gang leaders to reach an agreement with them. But before she can agree with them, Diamondback arrives and kills the gang leaders except Domingo because he will help him with some work. Diamondback was about to kill Mariah, but she told her that she had ties to the government and that the police were now looking for Luke. She tells him that she will make the police buy the only bullet that can kill Luke from him, so he will make money and also get rid of Luke. Diamondback liked the idea and decided not to kill her. Albert and Claria were still trying to revive Luke's heart. Indeed, they finally succeeded in doing so. They were also able to remove the bullet from his body. After Luke regains his health, Dr. Albert tells him that he wants him to stay at his house so that he can conduct experiments on him because he is confident that his experiments will lead him to produce a cure for many diseases such as AIDS and cancer. But he refused. Luke and Claire then take advantage of the doctor's absence. They turn on a flash memory that contained a video of Luke's wife. He discovered that his wife was lying to him and that she was working for the prison administration. He also discovered that this prison was where strong people were brought to perform experiments on them. These experiments failed and several prisoners died, but Luke survived and had superhuman strength, which is why they made Riva stay by his side. When Luke saw this, he was shocked because he thought Riva was in love with him. Dr. Albert then came and told him that Riva was insisting that experiments be performed on Luke and she did not want to save him from death. Luke got angry and started breaking all the devices, and he told the doctor that he would not allow him to conduct more experiments, otherwise he would kill him. Then he and Clary go to prison and he tells her all his memories with Riva. He told her that he wanted to escape from all this and that he wanted to live a normal life, but she asked him to return to the city to stop Diamondback. He agreed to that, but he asked her to go somewhere before returning to the city. He goes with her to an abandoned church where he and the Diamondbacks were raised. He started to remember the past when he was young. He remembered when his mother spoke to his father, James. She asked him to take care of his son Luke because he was neglecting him. He also remembered a girl named Stryker who was James's assistant and Diamondback's mother. He remembered that his mother was talking to her and telling her that she was giving her money to raise her son away from James, and that she should not approach him, otherwise she would not give her any money. Luke discovers that his father was married to Stryker and that they gave birth to Diamondback, but they hid it because his father was a priest and did not want to be exposed. This means that Diamondback is actually his brother. He felt he had to return to the city to stop Diamondback. Then Diamondback decided to do something crazy to make people see that Luke is a criminal. He wore the same clothes as Luke and went and hit one of the policemen hard and killed him. Then all the policemen started looking for Luke. The police started arresting all the people who looked like Luke and also people who might know anything about Luke. Lonnie, son of lawyer Patricia, was arrested. One of the angry investigators beats him, but Misty and the police intervene to stop him. Then Patricia arrives with Mariah, 
who tells Misty that she will expose them because they beat Lonnie. Indeed, in a press conference, she accused the police of beating a child. She also used the event to strengthen her political position and ask her black community to stand together in the face of the injustice they are exposed to. Misty doesn't believe that Luke is a criminal and she tries to investigate Diamond back because he had previously beaten her and was trying to kill her. Indeed, she was able to know his true identity, and she also learned that he and Luke had grown up together, but then they were imprisoned, and the reason for their imprisonment was Diamondback. After she had all this information, she wanted to arrest Diamondback, so she went to Domingo and asked him about him, but he told her that this person was running Mariah's casino. So she goes to the casino where there were a lot of black people at a conference held by Mariah. Luke and Claire also came there because Luke wanted to keep an eye on Diamondback. Mariah started to discredit Luke, she also told everyone that she had the solution to eliminate Luke. She asked everyone to put pressure on the police to buy weapons from her because she had the only weapon capable of eliminating Luke. Misty saw Diamond back and went to arrest him. Luke also saw her and went after her to protect her. When Misty arrives, Diamond back shoots and wounds her, but Luke arrives and protects her. The existing media began to portray this. Everyone thought Luke had come to attack the place. Luke takes Misty and they hide in the kitchen. Diamond back ordered his men to take everyone hostage because he had a plan to implicate Luke in this. The hostages are already being taken into the casino, including Claire. Also among the hostages was a politician named Boone. Diamondback then fires a launcher into the kitchen, but Misty and Luke have hidden in the basement. After that, the police and journalists arrive at the scene. Diamondback then forces the politician Bond to call the police and tell them that they have been kidnapped by Luke. Candace had an injury to her leg and Clara treated her. Candace told her that she lied to the police, telling them that he killed Stokes. Then Clara asked her where Luke could hide. She tells her that there is a secret vault and that Luke knows its location. Then she asked Candace to pretend she fainted. Clara asked one of the men to let her go to the basement to get the first aid kit. One of the men actually went with her to the basement, but she was able to hit him. After that, she was able to reach the basement and began treating Misty. Out arrives Attorney General Blake Tower. He told Priscilla that Mariah had convinced the minister to use new weapons to eliminate Luke. He asked her not to use these weapons because they would cause many problems. Diamondback was talking to Shades and one of the men came up to them to tell them that Clara had escaped. He also told them that before she ran away, she had spoken with Candance. Diamondback was angry because if Clara told Misty about the truth about Stokes' murder, they would be exposed. So Diamondback goes to his office to communicate with Luke via microphone. He tells him that if he does not hand over Clara to him, he will kill a victim every 10 minutes, the first of whom is the politician Bond. Luke, after hearing this, decided to go confront Diamondback alone. Meanwhile, Diamondback was talking to politician Bond and telling him about his and Luke's lives. We discover that in the past, they stole a car together and were arrested, and because Luke was the pastor's son, he was able to get him out of prison. In prison, Diamondback killed one of the people who was trying to assault him, and because of that, he was sentenced to more years. Because of that, he had hatred and hatred towards Luke. When he got out of prison, he committed a crime and pointed the finger at Luke so that he would be imprisoned later. Then he wears gloves that give him strength, and then he hits Bon and kills him. He did this to make everyone believe that Luke was the one who killed him. After seeing the death of politician Bon, Priscilla decided to use the weapons that Mariah offered them. Luke started hitting Diamondback's men, then he reached him to find him on a high place and threw Candace, but Luke was able to save her. Diamondback takes advantage of this and flees the scene. Then the police arrive and arrest Luke. On the other hand, Shades arrives at Misty and Clara and tries to kill them, but they manage to overpower him and he is arrested. Most of Diamondback's men were captured. While Luke was being transported in a police car, he was able to untie himself and escape. The police start chasing him. One of the policemen arrived, but he knew the truth about Luke because he was one of Pop's customers at the barber shop. He encourages him to go after Diamondback in order to get justice. We then see Diamondback in a warehouse with his men after he managed to escape. He calls Turk. He talks to him and tells him that he has a lot of weapons and wants him to deliver them to arms dealers so that he can sell them to them. Diamondback then talks to one of his assistants and asks him to get Shades out of prison and then kill him. He wants to kill him because he doesn't trust him because he previously collaborated with Mariah and killed Stokes. Later, we see Shades' lawyer arrive and manage to get him out of prison with ease. Then Diamondback's assistant takes Shades to a building to meet Diamondback. Suddenly someone tries to strangle Shades and kill him, but he was able to take the gun and kill them. He asked Diamondback's assistant to tell him who gave him the orders. He told him that Diamondback ordered him to do so. Shades then kills him. On the other hand, Candace met Misty and told her the truth. She told her that Mariah was the one who killed Stokes. Later we see Shades meeting with Mariah, he tells her that they must cooperate with Luke in order to get rid of Diamondback. Meanwhile, Luke caught Turk and asked him where Diamondback was. After several hits he told him where he was. Luke immediately went to confront him but did not find him. He found Domingo's gang members dead there. Domingo was seriously injured and there was a bomb about to explode, so he carried Domingo and left. Luke asked Domingo who did this to him. 
he told him that they had come to get rid of Diamond back and his gang, but he surprised them and killed them all because he was wearing a superhero suit. Then Domingo then died. Then Luke goes and meets Misty. He tells her where Turk is so she can arrest him and make him confess to Diamond back because he is dealing in weapons. Then he goes to the barber shop, where Mariah and Shades come to him. They told him that they would give him evidence proving that Diamondback was the one who killed Stokes and that he was also the reason why Luke was falsely imprisoned. Indeed, he agreed to this, but suddenly Misty came, who wanted to arrest Mariah for Stokes' murder. But suddenly Diamondback arrives, wearing a superhero suit. They shot him, but he was not affected by it. Luke starts attacking him and they get into a violent fight. Most of the city's residents were watching this fight. Finally Luke was able to defeat Diamondback. The police arrest Diamondback and Mariah. Luke was also arrested in order to complete the procedures for his release from prison. We see Priscilla interrogating Mariah, but she denies the charges against her. Then Misty begins interrogating her and tells her that Candace was the one who confessed against her, but she denied these accusations. Candace on the other hand was walking down the street, but suddenly Shades came to her and killed her. Misty is informed of Candace's murder, which angers her. Because there was no evidence against Mariah, they released her. Mariah returns to the casino to run it with Shades. Luke was in prison with Claire and they were waiting for the investigation to end so they could leave, but two officers arrived who wanted to arrest Luke because he had escaped from prison. Luke is taken back to prison. In the final scene of the series, we see Diamond back in the hospital and Dr. Albert was the one treating him, which means that the doctor will conduct experiments on Diamondback. More events await us in the second season of the series.